that you can always, if you can make a change in the back end, that's the best thing to do without having to touch anything on the front end. All right, so this is the, so once I now double click on it, when I double click on it, it is doing the log on load balancing and coming back and figuring out which is the most performance server and it will let me log in there. Just by looking at the host name in this case I cannot tell where did it go because both the instances are running on the same host name. If they were running on separate host name this would have told me. Since they are running on the same host name the only way I can figure it out is by going to system status and then going to server name. Here it says zero zero. That means I'm connected to zero zero, not zero two. And now let's look at SMLG transaction again. Um, this time we are going to click on load distribution icon. If I click on load distribution icon, it shows me the two instances that they are both um, green, they are both available and the preferred one and the preferred one um, is the one which is going to be saying current logon instance for that logon group, right? the preferred one. So for AD, for me, it is 0, 0 and it is 0, 0 for most of for this guy it is not, but you know, I don't know if this guy only has got one application server in there called 0, 02, so then the only 0, 02 can be preferred, right? Um, and the way it determines which is preferred is by looking at quality. The higher the quality, the preferred you are. And quality is an algorithm between response time, threshold, number of users, and dialog steps. An internal algorithm which SAP has built. But in each case between response time, see this has a lower response time and hence a higher quality. This one has a higher response time and hence a lower quality. And this is the last time it sampled these values to determine the quality. But you can artificially set a threshold either for response time or for users saying that after this threshold, don't send any more users to the server. And the threshold could be a response time threshold or a user threshold. Do what? I'll have to charge you again for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what's your question? Oh, do the, yeah. So SMLG and then click on load distribution. How did we create which ins these two? Zero zero and zero two? Yeah. Yeah. Third or fourth day of the class, how we create those things. Yeah. But good question. You know you have to create them. Even after installing they don't just show up there. So let's say you install retail and BI on the same server is it yeah. The physical location has got nothing to do with the logical entities. SAP does not care you're putting it on the same server, different server, no matter how you mix match. That's more for your, uh, you know, security and scalability and, you know, your budget, right? You can put every single thing SAP sells on the same server for all you want. Or you can distribute it for scalability, both horizontal scalability and vertical scalability. Does that mean we can have BWST and ECC on the same server? 
No, his question was earlier different than how do you create these instance names, right? right. There's a process to do it, but then his follow-up question was that can I have two separate instances of different products on the same host, same server? Mm -hmm. So for production, it's not a good practice. For non-production systems, a lot of people do it. In fact, you can have multiple products on the same database also. It's called MCOD, multiple component one database. Is it a good approach? No. Yeah, because the problem with that approach is, and as you guys will learn, when you do system copies, when you want to copy you know, production to a quality system, or production to a sandbox system. If you have an, if your target is M card, you cannot do just a database restore. You have to do export import, uh, which is messy, right? Export import is SQL level. Database restore is block level. And the patching is also a big thing. Yeah, everything means. Yeah. But the bigger, you know, the bigger issue is around. You know, you're, you're going to be doing restores more often as a homogeneous system copies more often than upgrade from 10G to 11 or you know, things of that nature, right? Or uh, even for SQL Server. So, but MCOD is very good if you've got training environments, you know, where you need to really conserve cost. You want to run just one database, you want to conserve cost, whether it's a training environment, demo environment, sandbox, right? Where you know. You know, I can always reinstall, rebuild, right? What I want is only one database engine, one backup, right? Put everything in there. Also, the bigger disadvantage of MCOD is you cannot tune based on, you know, are you going to tune for OLTP? You're going to tune for star schema kind of access if you mix and match. Uh, good. So I, I think this, this um, is good that we were able to look at this specific exercise. Um, if if I show you the exercises, if I bring up the first one, um, day two, create logon groups is you know, but we did this right. It's here you'll see in a lot of our exercises the SID is KD two. You will always change it to SD one. Screenshots are from a different SID, but you guys did this, created a logon group. Right? Remember? Yeah, this is from a slightly older version of SAP GUI. You don't have to do generate list, it generated the list of SMLG itself automatically. Right? It's got some other exercises which we have not done, but that piece we just did. Right. So most of the exercises are like that. You'll have screenshots, you'll have instructions and why we are doing it. Um, okay, so moving back to okay, we can change the threshold right there. Mm -hmm. the screen Not in that screen to uh, change the threshold. Um, You can't change it here. These are all read only. What you need to do is you have to come back here. I'm in read only mode, but let me see if I can. Fred, can you come out of the transaction, please? Uh, SMLG. Fred, can you come out of SMLG? So now, uh, if I go to B31 AD, if I want to change the threshold, this attributes tab has got the thresholds for response time and user. Also, this attribute tab has got, if you want to enable the same logon group for RSC traffic as well for remote function calls. That means it's not an interactive user logon, but it's a function call being made from an external tool, any tool, whether it's a uh, batch scheduling tool, whether it's a you know tax 
taxation tool, right? There's a number of bolt-on products. If they're making remote function calls, those remote function calls also you want to load balance, right? They shouldn't all go to one app server. They should also spread out. So if you want this to be enabled for that, you turn this on. This IP address, if you have public and private interface, right? If you if you look at an app server, uh, if if you look at an app server. Um, The SAP approach uh, of app server and database servers uh, from a physical architecture standpoint is that they have two interfaces, two network interfaces typically, public and a private. Server to server traffic goes on the private interface. Server to SAP GUI traffic goes, goes on a public interface. Why? Because there is 10 times more traffic on the private network and that's why you want a giggy, a gigabit ethernet and SAP GUI to server traffic is one tenth so you can even run a hundred megabit so if if that is the case here you need to give the public IP address so that means if you got two IP addresses right so if, especially if you have got you know a cluster What's facing to the world outside the data center is the IP address you want to give there. Actually, the diagram behind you, you know, it shows it very interestingly. You know, that's a, a global, inter, you know, a global installation of an SAP at a, at, at a Fortune 500 company, and, and how it is set up. Two data centers in the center, and you know, um, you know two dozen plants connecting to it globally. Um, um, okay, so good. So this is good exercise, you know, we uh, we looked at it. Uh, let's Now let's scroll down to see what else we want to cover here. Okay. Um, this is an important topic. It, it just takes to, why do you want to use logon group, right? There are actually multiple reasons, right? Um, SAP systems sometimes have significantly more than one or two assigned instances, right? You could. You know, earlier, you know, when I started in, in basis, right, you had, you would go to a Fortune 500 company, 24, 36 app servers. Nowadays, because of vertical growth, right, with the processor speed, you know, you would see anywhere between three to nine, and, you know, people would be able to manage most of their workload in that, right. Um, so earlier, you know, would have significantly more than one or two assigned instances. Each of these instances provide buffer areas, right? So they've got the memory buffer uh, for programs, dictionary objects, screen structures, and table content, right? Uh, and these buffers are filled with data and continuously updated during the runtime of the instance, right? That's where caching is happening. And the system attempts using various algorithms to organize the contents of the buffer. You know, all the algorithms are in and around LRU, least recently used, right? Least recently used, out of sight, out of mind kind of concept, right? It's going to be dumped from the buffer. That means if too many different kind of users keep coming to the same app server, 